The first wave of NFL free agency is in the books. And yes, the Minnesota Vikings made some moves, uh, bringing in some dudes. Uh, you know, not they didn't go crazy, but, you know, it, at the same time, they didn't, uh, you know, definitely didn't sit there dormant. Uh, yes, they let a couple of uh, key guys walk, uh, like Adam Thielen. And yes, they cut Eric Kendricks, uh, which I do think does free up a little bit of things for uh, guys like Brian Asamoa. But. I still think that this team, uh, you know, the, with what they did specifically in the free agency, you guys can check out uh, our full recap of that. I really think that they set themselves up to be able to just take who falls to them. And, you know, if they get a player that they really like, they can go ahead and trade up for him and go from there. But today we are doing our very next Minnesota Vikings mock draft, um, kind of a post free agency edition now. I know there's a lot more that can happen. There's still some things that could happen, but at the end of the day, I definitely think that, uh, you know, we've got kind of a general gist of where the Vikings are going to go. So here we go. So uh, Severon mock draft, high speed. Things are getting pretty quick here. Uh, yeah, we'll just go fast. So I want to go with the PFF uh, version of the big board because, I mean, they have pr uh, they definitely have a better idea than most of us. Uh, so care for position of value and draft for needs a little bit higher. Um, you know, they're high, but not all the way up because, again, I do think that teams now, uh, there's a lot of teams that I think just legitimately took care of needs in free agency, and now they can go uh, best player available just like the Vikings uh, really did in free agency there. So, yes, you brought, brought in Dean Lowry and all those guys, so I'm excited. So a little bit of randomness because, again, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. So, all right, so the Vikings own the 23rd overall pick in this draft, and we're going to see how this goes. Mm. Ooh, this is interesting. So right off the bat, Brian Bressy falls to you at 23. You've got a need. You do have a need at defensive tackle. I know you brought in Dean Lowry, but you lost Dalvin Tomlinson, uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see how the rest of this kind of unfolds. But Brian Bressy was regarded as what the second best defensive tackle in this draft, maybe a month or two ago. And uh, yeah, like he had a good combine. Uh, you know, obviously injury is a concern here, but I mean. Falling, get him, getting probably one of the better defensive tackles just in terms of size, um, strength, speed, all those different things. It really is tantalizing here. Do you pass up on that? Do you just see what you can get? Because I do want to get back into the second and third rounds. Or the second round, excuse me. I just... I think Brian Bressy is too good to pass up in this spot. I really do, because who else are you going to get in that particular spot? I, I'm i going Brian Bressy here. I mean, him falling to you at 23, it's it's nasty. And so, woo, this thing had its coffee this morning. Okay, so now we are into the third round. Uh, I do think this is one of those things where, you know, there's a lot of things going on here. You could definitely trade down and get your guy. Ooh, Dorian Williams is still there. I really think we could trade down here and really get some capital. Can we get back up into the fourth? Four, five, four, six, seven? Four, six, seven to move down 10 spots. I mean, I still think there's got to be some dudes there. So they moved all the way up. Let's see who is. So they got up and went up and got Hendon Hooker. All right. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Who else is there? So 97, uh, we are back at. Uh, yeah, so DeMarvin Overshown is there. Uh, let's see. Kayshawn Boot is there. Kayshawn Boot. He's a lot of fun, if you ask me, because Kayshawn Boot is one of those guys. He's a big-bodied wide receiver. He's going to make some plays for you. Uh, and, again, I don't think he's going to have to come in right away. A uh, big-bodied wide receiver. I was thinking of – oh, I was thinking of Xavier Hutchinson. Excuse me. Yeah, Kayshawn Boot, I, I think he's a guy that's more uh, of a catch and run in stride kind of a guy. I think that's kind of what the Vikings are kind of missing, low-key. Um, Kayshawn Boot, uh, Jaden Reed. Ivan Pace is a lot of fun, too. Ivan Pace is a lot of fun. I think we can get uh, Jacorian Bennett and Ivan Pace, but for right now, I mean, Kayshawn Boots just sitting there. DeMarvin Overshone, I know we've got needs at linebacker. I also want to get O-line. O-line, 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 O-line. Hey. Ugh. Okay. Well, I think at this particular spot, I'm going to go Kayshawn Boot here. Yep. Uh, and then you're back, and yes, you get uh, kind of back in here. Cam Jones is still there at linebacker. Ooh, baby, I love it. I really love it. Uh, so, yes, I'm going to go ahead and get Cam Jones here, the linebacker out of Indiana, because, yes, you're back into the fourth round. It's not a huge need. Like, I know you've got um, Jordan Hicks for another year. You've got a guy like Brian Osamo who just flies around and makes plays. But, I mean, after this year, uh, this is like this – Jordan Hicks is last year, most likely with the Vikings. So there's a lot of things that are going to happen here. So uh, as far as corner, what else we got? So Zach Pickens – oh, I love me some Zach Pickens. Caillou Blue Kelly – 
I like me some Coyote Blue Kelly, though. I really do. I really think we need to go and get some more uh, more help. I, I really want to get some help along the offensive line because I don't want Ed Ingram not going into training camp without any competition. Uh, but Andrew Voorhees tore his ACL. That's going to be kind of interesting. Um and really, after the second round, there is definitely a fall off. So, if the Vikings want to trade down from 23, I definitely think that is going to be their best bet. But for right now, Caillou Blue Kelly. I like Mason Caillou Blue Kelly. One of those. He's got good size. I don't think he's a reach here. Yeah, you go Caillou Blue Kelly. Cool. All right. Now we're down into the fifth round here. So Juice Scruggs is there. Oh, Jake Hayner is there. Do we do we just take a flyer on Jake Hayner? Because I know that, you know, Kirk Cousins is going to be whatever. But Jake Hayner is sitting there, a uh, small school guy. You know, you could really do a lot of good things with him. You could at least just see what you got. I really like the idea here. Henry, Henry Toyo Toyo's there. Stetson Bennett. I like Jay Kaner, getting him here. I really do. Again, I know Kurt Cousins, uh, his contract is really up in the air. There's a lot of things that are going to happen here that could be very interesting. But overall, yeah. All right, Mohamed Abrahim is there. Cameron Latu is there. Warren McClendon. Caleb Chandler's there. Hmm. Chris Rodriguez out of Kentucky. Let's see. Yeah, I really feel like the Vikings, uh, you know, I, I, I like how this draft ended up now that we're going through it, but I really think they're going to have to trade down trade down in the first round to be able to get some of their guys that they want. So, yeah, Caleb Chandler here. Uh, again, I, guard is definitely a need here uh, and just want to see where uh, we can get some of these guys. So, McClendon, Curtis, um, you know, they they kept Oli Udo, so I don't think that they're going to really double down on uh, tackle here. Let's see, linebacker's good. Do we want to go edge? Who's there at edge, by the way? Maltonado's there. I really just want to see. Like, well, no, they. I think they're going to keep, actually, now that I think about it, they're probably going to keep uh, Zadaria Smith. Uh, and, yes, they've got Daniil Hunter. Um, and so, let's see. Mm. This is tough because... Tackle, tackle, cool. Cameron Mitchell's still there. I don't really want to double down on corner. I've kind of already... Oh, Brendan Hill. Oh, yeah. Okay, Brendan Hill out of uh, Pitt. Uh, again, I really feel like you've got a guy like uh, Josh Metellus that I believe he's in his last year of his rookie contract, if I'm not mistaken, or he's getting there. So you're going to want uh, another piece there definitely to help out uh, in the depth side of things. Uh, and so then finally, ending this whole shindig, um, do we want to go after a kicker just to bring in some competition? You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring in a kicker for some competition for Greg Joseph. Jake Moody. Yeah. You bring in a Jake Moody. What's up? Jake Moody uh, to go in competition with a guy uh, like Greg Joseph who had, who struggled with extra points last year. Like, let's be real. What, he missed like six of them? Yeah, we need to bring in some competition. So here we go. So right off the bat here, uh, they gave us an A for the Brian Bressy uh, pick because I really feel like, you know, this makes, that definitely makes a lot of sense to me. But um, so you get probably the second best in terms of talent wise, the second best defensive tackle to fall to you because of injury, because, you know, guys like Kalaji Kansi had really good combines. So Brian Bressy makes a lot of sense here, uh, makes a lot of sense. Sent, sent, sense. What's wrong with me today? Uh, so Kayshawn Boot there in the third round. Listen, I know wide receiver is not a need because, you know, you really do have some guys later on that, like Jalen Naylor that you're really excited about. I know you're also really excited about, uh, you know, what, what you've really got out of guys, um, you know, like uh, KJ Osborne last year too. So, I mean... <laughs> I think that Keishon Boot could be a lot of fun in this offense uh, and be that guy that, you know, really does do some different things. So uh, I think you've got, you know, between those four, I think you're definitely like where your wide receiver room is looking at. Um, and so then, yes, Cam Jones uh, at linebacker. Listen, Cam Jones, I think he's going to bring a lot of different things to this defense. He's going to be a lot of fun. Caillou Blue Kelly getting him in the fourth round. Um, I think, you know, again, I know that you got you brought in guys like Byron Murphy Jr. and all that, but I do think this makes a lot of sense. And then getting Jay Kaner in the fifth, uh, he's one of those guys that like I really feel like he is uh 
going to get into the right offense, or if he gets into the right offense, he's going to do some good stuff. So Jay Kaner there uh, coming up out of Fresno State. Caleb Chandler. My only my only beef with this mock draft is I want to get guard a lot sooner, and trading down is definitely uh, advantageous for the Vikings because I definitely think that there's some uh, different defensive tackle help they could get. Even though Brian Bressey falls to us, that's just a match made in heaven. But uh, Caleb Chandler. Um, my, my dream pick here is uh, Steve Avila. Maybe if you trade down to get Osiris Torrance and somehow get another defensive tackle in the second or third round, fine. Um, we also took Brandon Hill. That might be a little bit puzzling, but you know uh, the Vikings, I know, you've got a three-safety look that you're most likely going to have uh, with Harrison Smith, who, yes, did take a pay cut, but this could probably be the last year that Harrison Smith is with the Vikings. Yes, I know you drafted Lewis Seen last year, but broke his leg. We're going to see how he heals and comes back, but then also, uh, you know, I mean, you got to look at what you got with Cam Bynum. I, I know there was a lot of times last year he looked a little lost, but I do think in a new defense uh, with a new scheme, he's going to do a lot better, um, but overall, I think bringing in a guy like Brandon Hill, uh, you know, to really be a backup because Josh Metellus is, I believe, in his last year of his rookie contract, and so he's going to be a player that you know after this year is probably going to be gone. So Brandon Hill, uh, you know, is going to be a guy that might play some special teams, uh, might be a guy that you want to take a look out for. So uh, and then finally Jake Moody uh, in the seventh round because Greg Joseph needs competition. I'm sorry, like I know he just signed a fully guaranteed contract. I think it's fully guaranteed, or pretty close to like two million dollars, but I don't care. Jake Moody needs to come in uh, and needs to uh, bring some competition to. Uh, Greg Joseph. Uh, but that's it. That is our um, next, our latest Minnesota Vikings mock draft after free agency, or at least the first week. Let us know what you guys think. Make sure you guys like and subscribe down below. Leave a like and a comment. It helps people find the show. We greatly appreciate all the support that we've gotten and continue to get. You guys are all truly awesome. We love every single one of you. Down in the description below, you'll find all of our social media platforms. So give us a like and a follow there. Also remember to give us a listen and sub on iTunes. And finally, if you have anything else you'd like us to cover, send us an email at the sportsbp at yahoo.com or put it in the comment section down below and we would love to cover it. But let us know what you guys think about our Minnesota Vikings mock draft post-free agency edition.